He is back for the fourth time on this podcast and the only one to do so so far. Please welcome Thomas Mackey. And this week we're going to discuss alternative history. And this episode is titled What If? So we were hoping we were not going to discuss the Marvel series. What if? I'm sorry to disappoint you. That's not what we're going to talk about today. But what do you think about it's so popular with what ifs? Like you got the journey. The man in the high castle, for example, where Germany won World War Two, and you know, what if Rome never fell? What if uh, that the all these little tiny details that could have changed the way the world has been today? What do you think is so captivating about this, uh, the alternative history part? Hello, uh, I have a I do have a professor friend who hated the idea, but I actually liked it because history has a lot of contingencies. Um, it didn't have to happen a certain way. Just because something did happen doesn't mean it had to be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of historians, start, I start teaching my students this um, called the five C's. And um, in a sense, that kind of brings up what if immediately you start looking at this. Um, so what's fascinating is that in doing a, um, a what if, what if this, um, you really have to start looking at the context that happened, the, the event you're looking at. And you start maybe walking backwards. So then you're forced to rehash what we think we know, what we have down. And okay, if this happened differently, and so you start seeing this sudden, this web of influences grows and grows. And and it becomes so obvious that, wow, darn, this is complex. Mm. Now, even small, surprisingly small events um, have a tremendous, and I, um, in fact, I think a lot of people just instinctively like this. It's it's creative fiction, but it also forces us to rethink um, ourselves, rethink things around us, how it happened. Um, and we may perhaps a little more appreciate what actually did happen a little better. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's 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 a popular thing. In fact, um, in Ben Franklin's World podcast, uh, Miss Colbert will al always end her note or her questioning with what ha would happen if mm. and she always in the history that i go i you know <laughs> mm -hmm. they get suddenly startled but she always ends it with so, just some poking question if something happened differently right how could you readjust uh, you know what would what might be some of the adaptation and that forces us to look at this philosophically as opposed to trying to make it, it's a solid scientific thing. It's not, it's an art. History mm -hmm. is an art, it's a philosophy. And therefore it's it's prone to a what if question. Mm -hmm. So let's begin then, this is more, yeah. this is more your area and you studied Abraham Lincoln mainly. And so that's why I told me to be, we begin with this. And there, we, sure. there are some historical fiction on this topic as well, but uh, mm -hmm. it's, I, from what I heard, it's not very good. There is a book series about it. I think <laughs> I don't remember the name of the series, but from my, what I gathered, it's not very well, but we're going to discuss what if the South won the Civil War in America, that is. Right. If, yeah. Um, they could have. I I've, I've, uh, remember one military historian that argued that uh, if the South, in fact, the new, South knew this, they had to win it quickly. They had to be able to exhaust or win the South. But there was this, um, and it really was only one state different. Yeah, for example, Kentucky had clearly sided with the South as opposed to being split or neutral or tried to be neutral. Um, Lincoln himself had said the game's over. And it's one state difference, a very rural state difference, because it would have been too, there was no launching place out, you know, north of the south of the Ohio River to start this, you are going to be in, you know, there's just there's no way around it, and so um, the loss of that one, and then some, uh, not my theory has been, if the, uh, for example, let's say in 62, 63, Lincoln gave up, um, they may have lost Washington D.C. to the south, because that was still in a southern state, uh, or it could have been a DMZ zone right there, but. Uh, because of the mutual hostility, which had been building for decades before this, um, I would theorize that there would be an armed border from the Potomac River all the way to California. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and there was so obviously flight. it kind of like North America and South America. Well, the more than that, know. there would probably be a a um a group of states from Michigan to Massachusetts. Uh, I would say Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois would have split. The, the, each those states would have been pulled apart. Hmm. Um, there would probably be at least three, maybe four separate countries out of this because. I'm I'm pretty sure the southern states would never have held together. Mm -hmm. Texas would have probably gone independent, or taken over, tried to take over New Mexico. Um, uh, there was just you know, so there's there are these animosities that were already you know in the air at that time. Um, I told my students one time, I says, can you imagine if the Ohio River is an armed border? Who's going to control the river? You're going to have fighting on that river for the next century. And when you get to the falls of Ohio at the cataract before you enter the Mississippi, um, the, the canal is on the northern side of the Ohio River. You know? um, and then who's going to control the Mississippi? Mississippi is the only way out of the country to the south. Right. So everything else, the, the, if the south would have won, the north would have lost all access to New Orleans. Hmm. So, the, so the river would be essential. The rivers, at, even at that, even though the... the um, geography was very much growing toward railroad the rivers were still the bulk of all agricultural produce that went out of the country the ohio and mississippi were essential to to a, a, any any remote connection to a global market if you didn't have those two rivers you weren't going anywhere the only way of moving that much cargo that much grain that much meat whatever it was had to go out those rivers and so the fight, continued fighting, would have been along those rivers, and access to those rivers. Um, it's 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 hard to say because at the same time, remember Mexico was at at war with them itself. France had taken over portions of Mexico um, to Maximilian, so that you know they were under uh, duress. Would that have changed how they would have happened? Would Mexico become a French colony? Mm -hmm. So. Our civil war impacted Mexico's and France, France's empire and Mexico's survival. Um, Canada would have been on LinkedIn because Great Britain was, you know, I mean, they didn't want a strong U.S. No one wanted a strong, and Europe would have wanted a strong U.S. That was a, that was a trade rival. So keeping it strong, but not chaotic. You don't want chaos, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so my, so I would have assumed that at some point shortly, Europe would have intervened, both Britain and France would have intervened to try which and side draw. would have been on the, the which side would they have supported the south well, or the north but the readings i've done is it appears that napoleon the third was trying to get britain um to work with it as together mm -hmm. france would not do it on its own they would not try and broker a peace on its own russia didn't want to deal with either one of those two mm -hmm. and so the russians were actually much more allied in an overt way with the United States throughout that time period, the Lincoln administration. Um, in fact, they they used both the ports of New York and and San Francisco to hide portions of their fleet just in case the war spread to Europe. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so there's an interesting economy, and it's hard here in America. It's it's frustratingly hard to get international history going. Hmm. We're, we're just so blamed to tie into our own area. So what ifs get lost? We said, no, no, it's not just us. If the, you right. know, yeah, because there's a question you began with, what if the South had won? You know, the North had been forced to to give up its claim of sovereignty over the whole nation. Um, what would that do to the Constitution as a whole? Yeah. Comes into play. Would there be a new one? You know, what would happen? Um, Lincoln administration would have been destroyed. Um, would the North have even held together at all after that how, how would Lincoln have been remembered if he had lost the Civil War? Um, the president who lost the nation. He would have been remembered only as that that guy who lost the country. Um, you know, in, a, in our memories, this is, again, again, public memory is not history, it's just kind of what you're taught. Um, Buchanan gets that gets that um, not moniker. He's the one who did basically, you know, fiddle while Rome burned. Um, He's the one who didn't do anything when things were coming apart because it's under the Buchanan administration that the South began secession movement. Mm -hmm. And he said, I believe it's wrong. 
it is illegal, but I have no power to change it. I have no legal authority to change it. And Lincoln said, if it's wrong, I will have the power to change it. I'm going to change it. You know, um, His approach was drastically different than Buchanan. Right. So, um, yeah, Lincoln would have been ignored. We would have, you know, um, not even talked about him very much. Mm -hmm. I've heard some say, well, they would have reunited sometime in the, you know, uh, maybe in, in about 80 years. Says, you have no idea how, what happens when two countries split off in an anger like this. Even if it's so-called peaceful, there's not going to be peace. Not going to be peace. You have too many, mm. too many border issues for three thousand miles. Mm. Um, so this is not going to go peacefully. No, you know, uh, but at last, because we we keep telling ourselves, and every country tells themselves this, that we're a peaceful, rational people. So I'm sorry, none of us are peaceful and rational in our own world. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Quit smoking that. You know, <laughs> you are not peaceful and rational. <laughs> <laughs> But so, so, something I want to talk about as well is, in, in this case, economically, how what would that situation, the economical situation, look like? Because as you know, the North was more industrialized mm -hmm. in, than the South, and but the South and New Orleans, which was pretty industrialized at this yeah. point. So, but would the North have been more financially stronger than the South? Because mm -hmm. as you know, the South depended heavily on slavery, and I want to get into that too, the part with slavery okay. as well. So how would it the economic situation that looked like if that we talked about it would have been split in the north and All the right. south of USA. Boy, because um a lot of the economy is going to be drained if you if there is required to have a per a permanent standing army. Hmm. A large permanent we we been now we didn't we didn't have one at that time. We barely had sixteen thousand soldiers. I mean, it was a, you know I mean hmm. that's a militia, you know. <laughs> right. So we didn't have one. I mean, virtually no navy or a modest, very modest navy. It was modern, but not very big. Uh, so the problem would be, uh, can the economy manage a new permanent standing army? And can it then invest in infrastructure, like continue, you know, rearranging the railroad system so that you don't go south anymore? Hmm. Um, the industry base would have obviously grown. And but there is, you know, plenty of grain land in the Midwest that would have managed, you know, Kansas, maybe it's split, but Nebraska, um, Iowa, um, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. You know, those are huge grain, you know, grain building areas. So they, they would have still built a food base, an, an agribusiness there. Um, much more inclined because you would have Chicago becoming more of a core city then. Right. Um, much earlier, probably even earlier, actually, you know, things like Chicago, you'd be moving west or because you'd be building a, a different base. The South being still, um, because they were determined to maintain um, a slave economy, not just for economic reasons, because it was valuable, but also it gave them um, an honor code. Mm -hmm. it, uh, the, having a slave system allowed the planter class, your elite whites, to always portray themselves, um, and it, no matter how poor you were in the South, if you're white, you were still better than a slave. Mm -hmm. um, but the Underground Railroad would have been even more active, mm -hmm. and my and this is now this is an assumption, but I think that the North may have become more militantly abolitionist. I think the I think the um, that honor code would have gone both ways. So I think many Northerners would have been waiting. For escape for um, um, people from the Underground Railroad coming across the Ohio River, mm -hmm. but you know you couldn't trace it, and 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 so they would be shooting back and forth as as um, escape people were escaping slavery. Um, so you know this would be a constant border conflict. Mm -hmm. um, you would have you know maybe slaves being shot at the border there. Uh, I I would I would think we, we would have a two way Iron Curtain. Along the big rivers, I really think that's probably what would have happened. How much longer so, do you think slavery would have been been obtained in the South? If, well, think if about one. the U.S. was the yeah the U.S. was one of the later ones to maintain it. Brazil still had slavery. Um, I think the, the Ottomans US, had slaves, of course, until nineteen twenty three. Yeah, but I think um they would have probably reestablished the slave trade with Africa, although they would have gone to war with Britain over that because Britain said no. 
mm. and the British, it, it was the British Navy, which, you know, banned slave trade. American Navy, even though they were, they were actually in treaty to do it, they wouldn't do it. Mm. They would never, you know, um, in fact, the last, it was Lincoln administration did the only time they would, they would actually capture slave vessels. Mm. Um, and actually, and actually hung um, a captain of a slave vessel because it was considered piracy. Mm. Um, but that was an international treaty. Anyway, I think um, they would have attempted, but I think it would have soured the relationship with Britain if they attempted to open up the slave trade again because mm. the British Empire said, no, you're not doing this. And that would have possibly put the South at odds with the British Empire. Right. Um, and so I don't think they would have had, you know, the cotton was not as king as they thought. As Senator Hammond, you know, said, cotton, you know, cotton is king. Um, there were other ways around it, which is also why they could not blackmail the European powers into supporting them. Mm -hmm. yeah, and and the European powers are simply not going to be blackmailed. They simply would not tolerate that kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. So I think the South would have been hard pressed uh, diplomatically to um, to manage itself in European affairs. Mm -hmm. They would have had a much harder time. Um, manage them themselves that way. Do you think slavery would have lasted way into the early it would have 20th lasted century? A while longer. Yeah, it would. Oh, yeah. Well, I think what might have happened is sooner or later there's going to be a slave revolt, like in mm -hmm. Haiti. And sooner or later, if, you know, a people who are oppressed like this are going to have enough. Right. Um, and it's probably going to start in New Orleans or in South Carolina. We have a large African American population. And at some point, one of those slave revolts is going to get, you know, get a, you know, an anchor point. And once that anchor point grows, then you start having, um, and, and there's no one to back them up. Mm. And there's nobody else in the world was, was going to back them up. And I can imagine a U.S. administration sneaking arms, you know, <laughs> into Florida, you know, right. <laughs> uh, arming, the, arming, you know, this is, this is the human and political nature. Your enemy has a new enemy. I'm going to arm them, mm. and so I, I, you know, I, I can see that as a form, and and that may have been a very vicious because there's a lot of there's a lot of reason to be hateful. Mm. Um, so it's hard to say what would happen there, but um, it would be an instability. I do not see the U.S. reforming peacefully. Mm. I, I've heard people say this. No, I do not believe that. Um, that, that that that's a pie in the sky. You you think too highly of yourselves. Thank you very much. Um, kind of an attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think that would have been all. For, so that would have also then it changed the balance of power in Europe during the First World War. Because the U.S. would not have been involved in that one. Um, we'd have probably not had a Woodrow Wilson end of World War One. So I don't know who would have been involved. You know, then you start getting to you 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 know. It goes too wide now. We're starting you know, right. <laughs> the river is the river is overflowing the banks now. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over the place. So you, you can see where this goes. Mm. But when you start think but, but think about it, you know, okay, the US becomes very influential by before the 1920s. The US is involved in world affairs where it had not been earlier. Mm. Except that it was the United States, but opened Japan. Yeah. In the 1850s. So um, in a, some sense, we are responsible. So how would the North and South have allied or not allied with Japan, mm. which is becoming an empire by the late 19th century itself? That would have been, you know, there's a whole other ballgame there. Um, so we could draw on forever, another hour, I'm yeah, sure, yeah, that, that, um, yeah. <laughs> on, the, on this topic. But that's that, we, we do have more... Yes. Or alternative history to discuss it. We are not going to discuss just one topic today, but we're going to discuss two, three more. And one of them is, and again, a lot of people like me, we're going to just go a little more modern time now. But one of the most asked what if is what if Germany won World War One or World War Two, which I'm not going to discuss today because there are plenty of information <laughs> on that already on YouTube or podcast, I'm sure. As I mentioned, The Man in the High Castle is an excellent book on this on TV show. I would mean, highly mm. recommend it. And we are going to discuss something more that I haven't seen been discussed. I mean, discussed this off recording as well. 
is that Germany had a pretty strong communist party and they did have right. kind of, a, I would, wouldn't hesitate calling it a revolution, but in 1919 they did gain power, I would say, I'm not quite sure, but I think it was in Munich. But we're going to discuss what if instead of the Nazis winning the election in 33, what if the communists came to power instead of the Nazis, which I haven't seen been discussed much, so I want to discuss this mm-hmm. with you today. And I, I like you said, I haven't seen anything discussed about this topic and I think it just would be a fascinating topic to discuss because they, they have kind of a really strong not really strong but a fairly strong communist party in Germany so there was a chance that it may have happened mm-hmm. wow it depends on which I would part of it which way the German churches would have gone um the Marxist in in um, in the formerly Russia in the Soviet Union rejected religion and so would have you know needed to remove or suppress you know religious um, parties and groups. Germany's was very large and Protestants tend to be really militant sometimes. Um, a lot of it would depend on which side. Now, um, if both Germany and Russia were communist had had a Party. There would still be rivalries because, um, I mentioned earlier, you know, these are cultural differences, language, cultural. They've got baggage already. Mm. You know, think about it. Germany, um, you know, going back centuries earlier, Russia had been invaded many times. Russia is still paranoid. It's wanting a late, a big fat, you know, mm-hmm. march land around it. It does not want a single border. It wants a big, wide swath, mm-hmm. you know, to protect itself. And we discussed this earlier as well before the, we started yeah. recording that China, when China became communist, they weren't best yeah. buddies. They still had the. They still fought each other. Yeah. So, so it, could, could, could it be like that with Germany that it, they wouldn't become best buds, but there would there kind of be a lot of tension like yeah. in China I and think Russia? That, yeah, I think a lot of tension, but I think they would play one or each other off against the other countries. But if Russia was not. An al was if not an ally, at least a neutral. Within when Hitler started taking over Europe, there had been almost nothing to stop him. Hmm. We're thinking about okay, Russia would say, okay, look, I'm going to go ahead and finish Poland off. I'll take other uh, Poland and I'll take the Eastern Bloc of Austria, you know, the Slavic peoples. You know how the famous Hindenburg Rude and talk. That's about. right. Yeah, if we start playing with that thing, the language barriers, hmm. Russia would have moved into East Germany. Germany would have up, up, you know, the German countries, but then would have had the Western Europe all to itself. Mm. Um, the U.S. was almost, and I looked back at this thing, and I was recently watching a um, the videos and his and reading some histories on the U.S. fascist party, and it was much stronger. We could not, the Communist Party could never get a foothold in the United States. Mm. I mean, it, we, you know, we. We toy with elements that we call socialist. It's, it's not, you know. Mm. We play with that. We we are we we use it as a curse word. We use socialism as a curse word um, because we are so, you know, other direction. So anything that might even remotely look like um, redistributing wealth is is a curse. Mm. That comes out of our experience after civil war with the French Commune. 1870s, the terrified Americans, particularly the old Republicans, that um, the common arts said, ah, you know, <laughs> this is a terrifying thought. So I think just culturally, we shifted more to the fascist side or something that I don't want to use the word fascist because it's not the same thing, but it's kind of there. It's, a, it's in that general zone of political thinking. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, I don't think much could have stopped Hitler, Second World War. France was France and Britain were both exhausted. Mm. I mean, they think of how many men died in the First World War. Mm. And there's really only less than a generation. There's just enough time for my daughter-in-law's my daughter-in-law's brother, right? You know, he was born in around 2000. Mm. And my daughter-in-law's little brother, young brother, would would just be the military age, you know. That's in his lifetime, which means somebody born in 1919 would be a soldier in 1939, mm. 38, but just barely old enough to now mm. put a uniform. 
So, um, so that, but that's go back to Ger what if Germany yeah. became communist, which is what they're going to discuss. Um, I, personally, I think that Hitler would have been gone to jail. He would have been arrested immediately. Oh yeah, yeah. Or... If Hitler got Hitler, you wouldn't have a Hitler. You wouldn't have a Hitler. That's okay. That's what you mean. Yeah, you wouldn't have a Hitler because he's fascist. Hmm. But would there be a still an intent? But see, communism is still an intensive at that time. I can that's pretty, um I think they would also be trying to occupy other parts. Remember, communism was very expansive at this time period. Right. You know, the Soviet Union is trying to expand. Mm. China was trying to expand. You know, the communism at that time period believed that the world needed to expand mm. all the power. So um, perhaps not as an invasion like Hitler would do, but as a Bolshevik, you know, Bolshevik. Bolshevism. Yeah, Bolshevism, you know, Bolshevikism, you know, some kind yeah. of term here. I can't yeah. give it, but, but, you know, you start working in the workers' parties. Mm. Written, um, in fact, my grandfather, uh, my great grandfather was communist. Mm. He was in Scotland. He was a member of the Scottish Labour Party, Independent Scottish Labour Party. Um, so he was very left wing. So Scotland was extremely left wing from Glasgow, you know, the coal mine, the coal belt. Right. They were. They would have been very vulnerable to communist thinking. Now it would have been again a different culture group, a different body of people. Um. But, you know, you have you have now Russia and then Germany. These areas are uh, communist. Is France going to hold up? Are they going to you know shatter to pieces? Um. You know, there there is there's not you know there's probably not much to with, with, you know, hold back that, mm. you know, that movement, because they all had communist parties. Mm. Um, I think England would have been resisted communism much stronger, but Scotland would have gone over. I think Scotland would have gone over, um, and that may have broken up the British. It may have broken up the United Kingdom. Mm. Do you think that the Allied powers would have gone to war not of against Germany for ideological? I, ideological reasons that in against Germany to stop from communism expanding further in the Europe and the world. No, um, I think the, the ideology was, was strong, and I think it grew. It grew a lot in the twenties, or actually the thirties, because the thirties when that when now, again we it, you know whole thing changes here. Um, would there still have been a Great Depression? Hmm. Yeah, you know, it, it hit the U.S., but it also hit Britain and Germany and France. You know, they all got hit with the, when the market crashed together. Um, I don't. I wish I knew more about this time period. Um, being, um, you know, the countries would not have been linked like that. Germany would not have been linked to the economies of France, Britain, and the United States as much. Mm. So you would not have had that linkage. Um, of course, then you want to say. It was it, is this one U.S. or is this the, my ultimate U.S.? You know, yeah. <laughs> you know. So you, you start again. There, there it goes again. Um, mm. But that 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 starts to remind us. Okay, what else was going on here? What what are the contextual clues do we have? And if the U.S. is like it was, like it you know, like it, if it was in nineteen fourteen, um, they would have been deathly opposed to communism. They were horrified at that. Yeah, and. And it perhaps it may have been the U.S. that was the fascist country. Mm. You might see that you might see fascism growing in the United States and not in Germany. Mm. Um, boy, I'm gonna get slapped for this or somebody. <laughs> 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 you know, you know, it, it, you know it, it's, this is not a. I mean, these these are philosophical questions when you look at uh, a range to the past okay that's yeah, possibility of good question because um you know in the 30s we were much closer you know the communist party is not that strong it's there we have uh, in the 20s we have um anarchists uh, which terrify um you know our, our leading you know our leading politicians mm. a lot of communities are horrified at the the bombings in chicago mm. and other places you know where you have anarchists and these are these are you know, not always common, but they're anarchists, a different group altogether. But um, if instead, I think, I think the more the bigger danger for the United States would have been fascism. Um, so if Europe had gone communist fully through, I can see the U.S. becoming more and more radicalized to go fascist. Mm. 
hmm. as a possibility. Before we move on to the next topic, we're going to stick to the mother times after this next on the next one as well. Before we go into an antiquity, I want to discuss a country that's in between Russia and Poland. Which, sorry, not, I was going to say Russia and Germany, but and that is Poland, of course, which oh, I was yeah. trying to lead up to, but I screwed it up, up a bit there. What would do you think? <laughs> what, what do you think would have happened in, in Poland? Because they did have a dictator at the time in. Yeah. Um, but do you think they would have fallen to the left or, or do you think they would have oh. stood it resistant to because no, they, I'm not... having two strong countries that both were communist right, meaning right. It, it would have been difficult, to, difficult for Poland I think to kind of resist this and try to stay neutral against such a powerful ideology meaning mm-hmm. to, like I said two different countries being so close mm-hmm. Well, you remember they've been divided up before between um the Russian Empire, the German Empire, the mm-hmm. First Reich. You know, so they would have had um, you know, it's, there have been experience with this before. I, my my guess is that they were too unlike either side. I think they would have been absorbed by either of the empires. Um they're you know, um, because they're not part of Austrian Empire, they're not part of that group that you know, so they're they've always been a little bit different. So um, they're a big country, but not that big. And I think they'd have been swallowed up uh, probably in piecemeal. Mm. Um, that tends to be what happens in, um, in that area. Because, there's, you know, your borders are so un, un, you know, fluid. It's, it's, all, it's a flat zone. It's um, You don't have natural border, big borders, you know, massive river, you know, mile-wide river. Right. Uh, you know, so there's really not that much uh, of a geographical line that you can hold between them. So um, I think Poland may have, you know, would at least for a time cease to exist again. Mm. Um, especially if there is a major conflict or a upheaval, if not a world war, a major upheaval in where the communists versus others are kind of jockeying for global positioning. Do you think that like I said it was it would have been a more of ideo- ideology? Yeah, yeah, um, but not in a global sense. I don't think you would see, uh, second, you know, because I think a lot of things in uh, World War II starts out of the the, the botched peace treaty of nineteen nineteen, mm. um, and and I said nobody comes out looking really good, and I think part of it is because I'm not sure there was a good way of ending this, with the attitudes and the uh, bringing out. I think Wilson was, you know, ideologically not ready for this. He becomes sick and ill, and he had no backing back home. Mm. He did, he had lost control, um, and the Republicans were, you know, and this is like our politics now. The uh, the uh, the party is up the party. We're, we're, they were going to shoot down whatever he did, no matter what it was. Mm. Um, so he had no support back home at mm. all, because uh, we were about to turn over into a almost a one party system by the twenties. Right, and and I think we're gonna move on to the next one now. And we, I th- hope this gives a fairly good idea of and how more people would be able to be interested in discussing mm-hmm. what if Germany become communist because it's such a, it it's something that like I said in the, before we started discussing is something and haven't seen being discussed much and it there was a tiny little chance that it could have happened. It didn't, of course, you know how it went. But still a little tiny chance that it could have happened. So I hope more people will be interested in discussing this in the future and get, get inspired by our yeah. art. Well, I think and, so. Yeah. And that they bring what their their ideas and what it might have looked like. But we're going to stick to the modern times a little bit longer before we go in and back further time in to think with them going to have a few more alternative histories there. And um, we go to begin. And you suggested this one, I think. What if JFK was not assassinated? And what, <laughs> what if they won Vietnam, the Vietnam or the US? Because uh, uh, this is one of the biggest what kind of biggest what if. And Stephen King <laughs> wrote wrote a book on this in 2013, I think, called 11 63, where he suggested that it would be a nuclear war if more if JFK had not been shot. But of course, this, that's not the main point of the story. The main point is that mm-hmm. it's set, you know, in 
58 and 63. And like I said, it's not the main part of, of the story, but it, he suggested at the end that there was a nuclear fallout. If you mm -hmm. so what do you think about this? What how do you how would the world look like if JFK had not been assassinated and they won the Vietnam War? I'm not certain if our civil rights movement would have gone the same way, first off. Hmm. Johnson as a vice P VP had um taken up the movement much stronger than JFK did. He kind of JFK tried to ignore civil rights to some extent. He didn't want to get tied into it because the Democrats at that time were dominated by conservative Southerners or had a large block. And without that conservative Southern vote, Democrats would have a really hard time beating Republicans um, in the Northeast. Um, there's That's the one difference. Uh, Vietnam was a mess even before JFK got in. Apparently, I think even Eisenhower had his hands dipping into Vietnam. The French were trying to maintain their colonial powers. This is interesting. My daughter-in-law is Cambodian. And um, her grandmother survived the Khmer Rouge. Uh, her grandfather was a farmer, so they ignored him. But her grandmother, and I get to meet her shortly, but New Year's, so, um, she survived the Khmer Rouge because she could sew uniforms. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Whereas everybody else they knew was murdered. Um, Vietnam would spin off, and and I and I I, I guess I was blaming the French for this. Um, colonialism needed to die out before nineteen nineteen. Hmm. Get your butts out of there. You have no business being there. Right? But that that's a twenty first century mindset. Um, it's hard to think like an imperialist of the nineteenth century. Hmm. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. really yeah yeah it's really hard because the French were determined to maintain empire in Morocco in uh you know you know North Africa they had chunks of North and West Africa they had chunks in um you know these other areas and desperately trying to maintain this the status of an empire hmm. you know Britain still had this but you know Britain was losing money by the time. Before World War One, they were already losing money um, on the empire. It was, it was costing them, not gaining. And France had, you know, they'd been eaten by the First World War, and they were being mauled. They were split and shredded by the Second World War. What are you doing, hanging on to empires at this at this point by 1950s? Um, make make friends, get out. Uh, the U.S. A little empire we had, like the Philippines, they finally had to agree, let them go, because, um, you know, you finally, and I think enough people, Americans finally decided we're not doing this. We're not going to be an empire. Um, but France, and, and, and I, th I fear France, I think, I think U.S. kind of got, maybe got blackmailed mm -hmm. and coerced into the Vietnam. And then the Gulf of Tonkin incident, which opened it up which turned out to be a completely fabricated piece. Mm. And one of my students, former students, uh, years ago, um, doing her graduate work, you know, found, you know, when documents from Tonkin became opened up and he realized that this was not, this would not happen. The U.S. was not attacked. Um, this was trumped up. And that, so we've got this entire fiction that would launch Vietnam, which was a no-win scenario. It was like Great Britain in North America. You know, we had, we had made a joke. It says never get involved in a land war in Southeast Asia. Britain had it never get in a land war in North America. You, know? mm -hmm. you can't win it. There is there, there, there is no scenario you come out of this in one piece. Because you can't tell who's fighting who. You don't know the conditions. Um, and you have no idea what's going on to begin with. You know? And I, I've heard somebody say, you know, and, and these are the older friends of mine, you know, people like who would be my older brothers kind of at, at, at age who were in Vietnam. I just I, I skipped Vietnam by a few years. I was born, you know, I missed it just by a right. few years because I'm too young. I was too young. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So. Dodged the there. <laughs> yeah. I'm not arguing on that one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So. um. I don't think there was a way of getting in. There was a, probably a better way, but I think, let me talk to this before. I was horrified. In fact, I wept 
when I realized that 1919 Ho Chi Minh attempted to meet with President Wilson mm. to discuss getting the French and their independence, helping them gain independence from the French. He refused to meet with Ho Chi Minh. Now, Wilson was a bigot. I'm so, there's no other way around it. He was a progressive, but the guy was an utter bigot. If you were not white, you were not much. Okay. Hmm. Um, he was an old Southerner, even though he believed in the New South, he was still as bigoted as his grandparents had been. However, in ignoring Ho Chi Minh, he pushed the entire Asian, you know, a hero hmm. of Southeast Asia into another zone to find an ally, a friend somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we think we should have known. Well, that's a dangerous thing to say. But yeah, I think, you know, we should have known slavery was wrong in the 1870s, 1600s. Yes, but, but, you know, and many did. There were some who did. Mm -hmm. um, he should have known. I can say, I think, say he should have known better. But yeah, but let's just let's just come down back to where we. Sorry, I'm, where, I'm, 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 that, that's all right. That's all right. I hope, you the, got me viewer, the I hope the viewers like like this. But the anyway, let's. There were talk <laughs> about how could they have won Vietnam, the United States, because there were. They were talked about this in an episode of North Korea, uh, yeah, the Korean yeah. War, that they talked about muting the North Korean Peninsula, and we yeah. talked about mm -hmm. this in Vietnam as well. Is that the only way that you know? Won this scenario, or is there another Probably way so. well, that he, you know one? They came pretty close to doing it. Um, Truman would not let um, anything happen. He was determined, I'm not going to drag myself into a land war with China. Hmm. Because it would not only, yes, the nuclear war would become a land war, which would become a nuclear war with everybody else. So he knew that would be, we, we're all gone. The nuclear, nuclear, the nuclear condition changes how far you dare go. It does right now in Ukraine. There is yeah. this dance they're having to do to avoid nuclear shared destruction. You know, uh, Fallout Four is a fun game to play. I don't want to live it. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Fallout are a fun game, but dude, I don't want to live in it. That world. Thank you very much. I don't want a green sky. I don't want to. You know, uh, have arms growing out of my out of my stomach, you know. Uh, we have, so, there is always this dance, and everybody does it differently. Kennedy would do it differently than Eisenhower would do it differently. They had to do the dance. And anybody in power, and by, by the time you get to Kennedy's time, I am certain now that there was a meeting with Central Intelligence and, and the military that they never thought they would ever hear. You know, the horrors, okay? Well, Mr. President, here's your memo for today. Oh, crap. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. And he realized there is no good answer. Mm -hmm. There is nothing I can do to pull this out. And I think many realize that they're trying to find what is the least damaging, at least to me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, who, who can I, who, yeah, how many less deaths can I come up with if you're, you know, the moral person? Um and I think, you know, we look back at it, but the two world wars and the Cold War would bring us to those brinks, constantly having to dodge a worse scenario. We fall into a horrible one to avoid maybe what we thought was a worse one without having any knowledge of what we're doing in many ways. Hmm. So Vietnam, I don't think, well, Korea really wasn't a win either. Korea was a draw. Um, yeah, you could nuke, but then everybody, we, we, you know, Korea is going to become a, 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 a vaporized zone, millions of dead, and it would spread throughout the globe. Mm. Um, quite often, reminding the countries that are in the middle of this thing, so look, we might be dead, but you're going to be the first ones dead. We might have some survivors. None of you are going to survive. Mm. You know, you could tell, you know, the Vietnamese, like, look, um, we might survive. You won't. You know, absolutely. You're you're in the middle of this. You won't survive. Um, the problem is, you know, Vietnam was lost as the U.S. you know could not go back in. It could not enforce 
but the but South Vietnam, you know, this was South Vietnam really a coherent country? Mm. Was it really an identity that people, you know, defended? Because you know, when the U.S. pulled out, it collapsed very quickly. Mm. So I don't think I I cannot. I mean, I'm sure there would be, but sort of a nuclear arms. I don't think, um, or or without a DMZ zone like in North Korea. Mm. If the U.S. had set up a, a massive DMZ zone, but they would have to have been there all the time. They could not have pulled out. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. politically by 1974, 73, would, it was done with that. They could not. They could not even imagine. You know, the protest had gotten so hot, and we were so chaotic. I mean, uh, we think of ourselves now as being a politically, de de you know, shattered area. I remember 1969, <laughs> 60, 60, 70. You know, yeah, I was young, but I do remember the riots and the bombings. Mm -hmm. um, we have nothing like that right now. Now, sorry, I went off the. <laughs> mm -hmm. I skimmed the trail. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I think we're gonna move on to. We don't do have a few more. We have to cover before we go for it. Give it up, and one of those I read about recently about Goldsworthy on on the fall of Carthage, and we don't might go mm. back to antiquity Whoa. now <laughs> because. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a bit time jump there, but the, back in the TARDIS. <laughs> but uh, and the, this is a kind of I would say I don't know if I draw a name here, and I don't know, but kind of the entire world's history depending on Rome and Wayne, yeah, between TARDIS or how it turned out to be, because it would have been quite differently if Hannibal and the Punic Wars yeah. had been won by Carthage, so. And of course, if they had won, Hannibal would have kind of had to have to march on Rome. But so, what would right. the how would it be wow. like if Carthage had won the Punic War because they were close to winning? It was yeah, inevitable yeah. that Rome yeah. won, which they did in mm -hmm. our timeline. But in a different timeline, what would that be like? Do you think? Wow, because Rome isn't just its direct influence; it's what we think of. In the 18th century, hmm. see a lot of our present culture is not so much a direct tie to Rome, but it's every scholar leader thinking they understood Roman Greece, hmm. and and so the Declaration of Independence, the all sorts of uh, Constitution, parliamentary ideas, all these the Whig histories of Britain, they all lead back to what they think they knew of Rome. So you change that, and all of a sudden, um, if there is a great empire in the Mediterranean, and it's African. Right. So there might very well be a much... Now, would Carthage have become Muslim in the uh, 7th century, 8th century? Hmm. Think about that. You know, would, would, the, would religion have flourished the way it did naturally? It would, like it would have Roman shifted world. differently. Well, oh boy. That's that shit shifts a lot because um if uh Christianity would start in the same location, Christianity spread, but not as an empire in North Africa. Now mm -hmm. it went with the empire, but it wasn't the empire. Whereas Islam was the empire. Mm -hmm. Um so, Carthage has survived the Islam as yes, until that's, that's Christian, big, yeah, until the, Islam become in the five sixties. Mm -hmm. Would it have would it have um, actually occupied Rome or Italy? Hmm. Would it have been able to maintain control of the boot you know, area? Would it have? Hmm. Would it have maintained? Would it have stopped at the Alps? Would it have um, bumped? You know, uh, what 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 other tribes in Europe would have resisted or would have? You know, wow. Now, um, thinking about that, if Carthage had taken the Italy, and then, of course. Later on, the Moors would take Spain, you know, so there's this, um, you know, it, it shifts. Mm. Um, would all of Southern Europe be the Carthaginian or Moorish? So um, based on the same, thing, same question, I guess, would Europe, would the European lake be an African lake? Yeah. Would Europe, would Southern Europe be an extension of North Africa? As opposed to North Africa being an extension of the European Empire, hmm. that's a, that's the flip, right? 
And so uh, religion wouldn't take a play in that one. Um, how would Islam and Christianity in work with the if they would passage? come to for being created at all? You know, right? Uh, would there because be as, you know, a, as you know, because of Pontius Pilatus, who was a Roman, sacrificed not sacrificed, but he had put Jesus on the cross. Christianity yeah. and then then mm -hmm. gets born, as you know, in the yeah. story. Yeah, that's would right. that have yeah. happened at, at all if Carthage had been had won the Punic War and they mm -hmm. had this. If, but if also, well, the, yeah, but we ask that would Carthage, even though control that in the Mediterranean, or would that be still Persian, hmm. or would that be Grecian? Because would Carthage then take on the Greeks? Would they win against the Greeks? Would they win against the Persians? You know, logically, it would seem that um, because the Greek Empire was always split, never became a you know one, uh, but the Persians were so. But perhaps the Persians would have survived longer. Hmm. And then controlled the you know the western edge, or yeah the western eastern edge of the Mediterranean. And I think which angle am I looking at it from? <laughs> and something we have to discuss as well: the what language had looked like in that time, because as yeah. you know, as, as everyone probably knows, the Ro the Ro Italian. I was going to say Roman, but Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, oh, and yes. Romanian are Latin. Yes. from yes. Latin. So how would mm -hmm. languages look like mm -hmm. today? And I forgot to say French, of course, but right. would they, how, what would it talk? Would they have some kind of Punic influence in the. Punic influence? Possibly more of the Gaelic. More than, it may have been that more of the, um, the Gaelic languages would have been larger. Hmm. Since there was no overall Latin, Latin, Latinization of the British Isles or Gaul or Northern Europe, perhaps those languages would have been much more Germanic and Gaelic in origin. Um, English probably would not exist. Um, and I, I would assume that definitely Spanish and French as Latin language would not exist. It'd be much, Spain would be Moorish, would have, a, you know, an African language with Italy. Um, so yeah, I think the, uh, the cultural dynamics would be stunningly different. Um, Hebrew yeah. would still be a thing though. In Hebrew, Hebrew would still maintain itself. Yeah. yeah there, there was, they're, they're there. Um, how that would play out differently with a either a Persian or Punic or Persian or um, Carthaginian overlords. You know, I th what I'm thinking instead of Christianity taking over, and eventually maybe there would be kind of some kind of constant time in the Punic, we would see kind of, the, if let's say that Carthage do have an empire, like you said, instead of the Roman in southern East, yeah, Europe, that, and then they would they get the kind of a Diocletian character who split the empire in two, and he maybe mm. Hebrew instead of a uh, Judaism instead of Christianity become, you know, the mm -hmm. the religion of the Carthaginians instead of Christianity, which might not even happen in our mm. in this not the same way. Yeah, well, yeah, there would be a, there would be a difference, obviously, um, because being a Christian now, you know, you know my, my assumption is that would still happen. However, the the context is dramatically different. Mm. So it's you know it's an entirely different context. Um, Christianity spread because Romans infrastructure. Hmm. Did Car would Carthaginians had developed the same infrastructure pattern, or any infrastructure pattern? Uh, which then begs the question: Would they actually have been able to occupy Southern Europe, hmm. or would they have gone up there and then left? A lot of empires. Um, um, my, you know, don't really act, you know, don't really have an, a solid empire where they occupy and control. They may have a tributary relationship, but not an actual occupation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, more of an economic empire as opposed to a physical empire. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Driving down the road here. <laughs> But the world, yeah. there's no doubt that the world today would have looked vastly oh, different. Yeah. Well, any of these things like this would, would have been dramatically different. But yeah, when you get further back, because there are so many other things that spin off that. Hmm. Uh, the Punic Wars are so long ago. And so much time has evolved because of what well, Rome did. In the well, we have world. naturally had the same conversation we have now, just what if Rome defeated Carthage? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Timeline. Timeline. 
but our own ethnic backgrounds would be different. Mm. You know, um, the the settlement patterns, the expiration, the, all that would have been very different. Um, you know, is Spain going to be there to be to launch um, the bump into uh, the new world, or right. is it going to be somebody else? And what what's their motivation going to be? Would there be a crusade in the eleventh century? Oh, yeah, so yeah. Well, the well, the Crusade, well, Europe would not have been in position for that one. They, mm. it's you know, that's a whole different ball game there too. Mm. How Islam, if Islam like that would have would have dealt the same way, we don't know that. Mm. And there is one. It's kind of same, but I want want to end on one alternative history with what if the Greeks had conquered and had an empire because as you know the Greeks were unified in the sense that they yeah. are today they were and they were more or less several city states that kind of yeah, fought yeah. each other like Sparta and Corinth etc but if they did unify and then they would eventually have an empire in the Byzantines of course mm -hmm. but that's centuries later but what if they instead of the know, Alexandrian uh, yeah, yeah the, the classical, classical Greece classical let us Greece. say what if Alexander's empire remained what would that be yeah, like yeah. What if it hadn't fallen apart after? Yeah, I cannot fathom his remaining because he he, he went too big. I mean, mm. um, he is uh, the adventurer who got all over the way to India for pity's sake. So, um, how do you maintain? How do you even think of maintaining or hope to have control? I mean, he caught Persia with their pants down, mm. and they were unable to. You know, their armies just got just buckled under his. But he really didn't have. Now, the beauty of it was that he built libraries. I mean, he built Hebrewism. He built the modern Hebrew because, you know, it, it ordered the Septuagint translation of the Bible. Hmm. That's the one that spread everywhere. That's the one that set Christianity up because you would have tens of thousands of Greek god curers. They had hmm. read the Septuagint. The Torah, you mean? Yeah, the, well, that's the Torah itself, but the, the whole... The prophets, the, the Psalms, the, and and the Psalms and the prophets, the um, the writings, you know, um, and they would have had, you know, all this would have been available to them. So by the first century, uh, be a um, maybe you know, not for common ACE, after the first century, um, there was a lot of Greeks who this said, oh, I like this is this is what it's you know they believed that was true, so they put in there. But if Alexandria's empire though stayed put to some extent because of libraries and culture mm. and rome in a sense adopted greek culture mm. they you know it wasn't the greek empire the greeks i, I don't know if, if they actually if the tomes and the silicates actually had an, a proper empire if they'd actually uh if the silicates hadn't taken the hebrews off so much uh that they, you, know, you know if others hadn't if they had had actually an ability to actually manage but the chaos, the Greek Empire was chaos. Hmm. So if it, you know, they, they had to have one, and I'm not sure. I mean, I suppose it was a possibility if you had a, if Alexander had kids. Hmm. If, uh, but Greece itself, again, we know this is important, was not a unified agent. Right. Uh, their their very their very culture was almost in opposition to to unification. Hmm. Uh, uh, Star Wars had a great character, Grand Admiral Thrawn, which looks at you know in the in this in the sci-fi in the sci-fi novels, looks at all these um, the artwork mm -hmm. of societies he's going to conquer, and through the artwork he figures he finds the weak spot. You know, in Greece you can find the weak spot. Ah, oh, these guys don't they they never will be unified. So I I, I can break this up this way. You know, um, you'd have to clean up. They'd have to have had to clean up. Their ability to, to self shatter. <laughs> mm. That what that's the main thing with them. They 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 were self destructive. Uh oh, I think I'm gonna lose power here. <laughs> I think we're gonna end it there. And uh, thank you so much for coming back on the podcast for a fourth time. I think. I'm gonna drag it on too long. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. And I, I enjoy though. I always enjoy talking to you. It's a great pleasure and. Uh, this has been with that age as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode on alternative history. If it, if it's really popular, I might do it again in the future. And uh, hopefully, you, if you have some comment on what you think you might have be done differently with what we discussed, please comment on in the comment the comment sections below. Before you go, do you have anything you you want to promote? Anything 
and any social media where people might find you if they have questions? Um, I'm on uh, Facebook. I'm, I'm on Twitter, Mastodon. <laughs> um, usually a TH Mackey or TD Mackey. Um, it's TD, TD Mackey PhD. Uh, after 10 years of trying to work in a doctor, I, 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 I'm putting PhD on my name for everything. <laughs> <laughs> 10, 12 years of that. I'm, that's part of my name now. <laughs> um, I think um, the, um interested in the modern early American history, I think uh, the, I'm involved with um, the podcast, Ben Franklin's World hmm. um, podcast. It's out of Williamsburg, Virginia. It's a, It's been a wonderful, neat podcast. Um, a lot of different scholars, um, not only their books, but also kind of getting a chance to explore what made, you know, how, how this, how this, this, this creature, which is the U.S. get formed. Mm -hmm. um, both good and bad things coming out of this. This is a pretty, um, pretty honest group of scholars, but it's, but it's meant for non-scholars. The whole thing is not meant for the academic elite. It's meant for everybody to kind of dive in and go, oh, cool. <laughs> you know, I never knew right. that. You know, that's what it's for. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been always, like you said, it's always a pleasure to have you back to the podcast. We are available on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts. You can find us on Instagram and well that age well. We are also on Twitter now. Well that age well, the same as name as the podcast. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check out some other episodes on the podcast. You're definitely going to find something you like. I'm sure. Please. This is my name is Alan. This has been Well that age well, and I'll see you next time.